92.1 WROI, WROI FM.com, and we are taping for RTC Channel 4. Tim's in the studio today and working his way around. Hi, Tim. Hi. There, there we go. See, we got we got to hear Tim talk. It's finally time we got good help now that Scott's out of here, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are taping for Scott to hear this. Anyway. Yeah. John Alley, of course, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital in the studio. Thanks for being here. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, my pleasure. Same to you. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the board meeting yeah, yesterday. board meeting yesterday. Uh, one of the first things we did uh, years ago when I first came here, you know, we were always audited by the State Board of Accounts, and I, as a former CFO, I wasn't real comfortable with that. So we made the switch to go with a commercial accounting firm, and we went with uh, Blue & Company. My feeling is about every five to six years, you need to change your accounting firms. Get a fresh look in there, some different eyes. So uh, yesterday we had a presentation from BKD, which is another fairly large accounting firm in the state, specializing in the healthcare uh, accounting. And so we, the board did contract with them. So we'll be moving forward with them for the next f four to five years. And you know, I told them yesterday, I said, five years from now, we'll replace you. Um, I just like that idea that fresh look, fresh eyes, you know, if I know what you're coming in and going to be asking me every year, that's not a good position for me or for the organization. So really, uh, I, we're looking forward to this. Uh, they're going to bring some different views that we've probably never seen before, different questions, and a lot of education. Very pleased with what Blue & Company had done for us. They, right. they helped us a lot. It was just that time, fresh set of eyes to come in. So we're looking forward to that coming up. Uh, they should start the audit here in oh, about another two to three weeks of preliminary work. Preliminary work and then? And then they'll come back uh, probably the second week of February for about okay. two weeks. Okay. So what they come in now, uh, they want to kind of get used to us, what do we have, and so we'll be gathering the data for them. They'll go through that and then they'll prepare their audit plan for when they come back in February so they can really dig into stuff at that point. And they do other hospitals They as do well. a lot of other okay. hospitals, yeah. So it's we wanted to make sure we stayed with a firm that specializes and knows about healthcare and because uh, that brings in education and one of the things that uh, Blue did and so will BKD I'll just get maybe a, a one paragraph email so hey this is coming up we want to make sure you're aware of that which is really helpful to me and other admin members and that we can start preparing now for what's coming down the road and, and like I told them I don't want to be the first person to adopt but I don't want to be the last so keep me in the loop so we kind of know what's coming so we can be prepared as we prepare our strategic plan and as our budgets. Excellent. And speaking of the budget, we yes. also gave the preliminary budget to the board okay. yesterday. We got that finalized, so they'll have it a month to look at it, bring it back next month, and hopefully they'll approve it at that point, get it all loaded into the computer and ready for 2017. How does it compare? We actually reduced what our expectations are for next year. Uh, with some of the exchange plans, uh, you know, folks are dropping out of that. We anticipate maybe our bad debt and our uh, compassionate care to go back up a little bit, so that's going to affect our bottom line. So we down tweaked it a little bit just because of that unknown. Uh, new election. We're not going exactly. sure what's going to come out of Congress next year. So rather than be over aggressive, we thought let's be very conservative with the budget for next year. Hopefully we can do better, but it's I think it's fairly close. Okay. Uh, looked at our capital equipment. We're required by uh, CMS, which is the Medicare portion of the government, to do a three-year capital. So we ask all of our directors, what's your wish list? And uh, they were very wishful for 2017. <laughs> uh, they came in at about $3 million worth of capital that they would like to get. So what we're probably going to do is start working on that a little bit, down to net. I'd like to get it down to the point where it's uh, equal to what our depreciation is going to be for next year, which is about a million three. So uh, I've got to cut uh, quite a bit out of that capital budget. What we'll probably do is move part of it to year year two and year three. I was going to say, can you out. extend that a little we bit? We can extend that out, yeah. And, uh, you know, we got to kind of look what is critical needs and what's kind of I really would like to have a piece of equipment. Needs so, and wants. Needs and wants, absolutely. <laughs> Just like at home, we have That's needs right. and wants. So uh, get that pared down to about $1.3 million and then give that back to the board. That was one thing that they kind of looked at right away. So that, a little too aggressive on the capital. So okay. kind of, you know, some points folks are going to be very excited. Some points folks will be dis disappointed in not getting their, their stuff. But yet it's still, not, it's still not going away. It's still, it's still not going away. Right. It might not happen next right. year, but we'll get right. it year two, year three as we project out. Right. Once we got done with kind of, you know, that housekeeping stuff, we got into the financials for the month of October, uh, billed out about $10 million, okay. wrote off about $6 million. Uh, pretty typical. Pretty typical. We're running right at that 60% of what we bill, we have to write off as uncollectible, either because the people can't pay or the contracts we have with 
you know, the Blue Crosses, Medicare's, Medicaid's. Nobody pays us exactly what we bill, so we always have to account for that. So that left us about $4.2 million of uh, spendable income, let's right. say, for the month, and we spent $4.6 million. So we actually had about a $450,000 loss for the month. Volumes were down uh, that month. Picked up a little bit in November, but we're seeing now as we get into the holiday season, sure. back uh, starting to drop back a little bit. As of the end of October, we're still at a slight positive for the year, so okay. we're hoping November, December picks us back up so we can at least finish the year in the black and, and not in the red. But right now, it's kind of iffy. Uh, we might actually post a small loss for this year. Okay. Hope not, but, uh, you know, it's kind of about every three to five years we have that loss, and then it builds back up for the next three and then drops off. And uh, Unfortunately, I can go back and historically look about we're in that downward portion of our cycle, and it'll start picking up hopefully next year. All right. A lot of new things coming next year as far as uh, government regulations and stuff. There's a, they're going to start paying us differently. Uh, in 2019, but we got to start preparing for next year. And right now, it's kind of a fee-for-service plan. Uh, you know, we bill the insurance company, Medicare, Medicaid, they pay us. They're going to put it, us at risk as we move into 2019. So there's certain quality factors that we have to meet. And they've got a grid that says if you get 90% of these points, you get you know full payment plus or minus 4%. So we're hoping, working now for 2017, we want to be on that plus 4%, and then after that it goes plus 5, plus 7, plus 9. So eventually we could get 9% more reimbursement than what we're getting now from our government payers if we meet all those quality standards. And, you know, I've kind of put the challenge to the staff. We're a good hospital. We're going to meet those standards. Exactly. So, uh, you know, it's going to be exciting. That, uh, I think that's what keeps me from retiring. It, all the changes, <laughs> I like, uh, you know, that challenge. And uh, it's, it's going to be challenging the next few years. But it'll be exciting at the same time. John Halley is our guest. He's president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Bring us up to date on the monthly board meeting. What else happened? That's pretty well it. Okay. Uh, I think everybody's you know getting ready for the big turkey day tomorrow. I think so. Uh, I think even some folks are talking about you know the Christmas holiday too coming up. So you know one of the things that we want to make sure folks are aware of. A couple safe things for tomorrow. Safe driving. Uh, we don't want to meet you by accident. So exactly. take a little extra time. Plan your trip. The other thing is safe food handling. You know, my dietary people was talking to me today about that. It says, if you can mention that on the radio, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, the, the stuff's real good at noon, but don't leave it on the table till exactly. 6 o'clock. Uh, exactly. Put stuff away. Uh, we don't want people to get sick from there. So safe food handling, safe driving, and we should get through the holidays without any issues. John, the building office has moved? Yes, they've moved over into uh, what used to be the physician's office over on State Road 25. Uh, we can still take payments at the hospital, so if somebody drops in there and wants to make a payment, we can still take those there. They can do them online. But if you need to speak to one of our billers, you would go over to the office there on State Road 25, uh, right next to Twiddle D's, okay. the next to the restaurant, okay. Okay, and the staff is all in there. We found that gives them a little more privacy, uh, a little better parking for folks because they used to have to park in the front, walk all the way through the hospital, go outside you know, into that next building. So now, hopefully it's a little more convenient once folks get used to where they're located and uh, the staff has a little more room over there. So uh, I, I think they, they kind of like their new digs. And frankly, that's a, that's a big part of what Woodlawn Hospital does. I know we're in the medical business, but we have to have the other parts of it we too. We have to have the other part too. And you know, it's one of those, our philosophy is you can go anywhere for healthcare. Why do you choose to come to us? So we gotta make sure that that experience that you're having with us is that best possible experience you can get. Do we please everybody all the time? No, uh, and, and some folks you just can't please. But we do our, try our hardest to make okay. sure that that experience is, is the best that we can give to you and your families. Uh, you know, if you're sick in the hospital, you don't feel good, you don't want to be there, well, your family doesn't want to be there either. So we got to make sure that we try to make that as pleasant as we can in you know, those times that's not the best points in your life. I know a lot of things you talked about today will be brought up at the December board meeting. Yes, we'll, uh, we'll finalize the budget at that point. Uh, go back to the capital equipment list, we'll finalize that. We'll probably have just a, a small little strategic where are we going to go as we're looking at some of these major changes that's coming in the reimbursement models. It's not only going to affect us, it's going to affect our physicians because their compensation might have to change. We're getting some you know, grumblings coming out of Washington. There's some uh, folks that you know, kind of work as lobbyists out there are saying that they're wanting now to change the compensation model for the physicians. So it's no longer a productivity-based system. It's a quality-based system, so that they'll be graded much like the hospital is, and then that determines how much of a income they can get. That we got to put part of their salary at risk. I'm still thinking that's three to five years away. 
but I need to prepare now as we start looking to that to make sure that once we transition to the more of a quality based, less productivity based, we're still be able to provide for our physicians in a, in a good manner and make sure that they're not going to take a major hit in their compensation. It's got to be difficult from your perspective, from the CFO's perspective, to, to plan ahead much further than one year, maybe 18 months at the most. Oh yeah, sometimes. Because of all the changes that are looming out there. Yeah, it's it's. if I had a crystal ball and I could actually tell me what's going on, I could be a billionaire. <laughs> well, we all could, John. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it's just, yeah, healthcare is just, you know, with the new uh, right. administration coming in, a lot of the things, you know, for years they were saying, uh, you know, you got to plan for this, plan for this, and all of a sudden I said, oh, wait a minute, we've changed our mind, we're dropping all that, now we're going to do this program. It's very hard to plan where you're going to be and what you're going to do. So what we can plan for is our expense side, and I think our staff does an excellent job when we look at what our budget is and our actual expenses, we're within 0.2%. So they're doing an excellent job there. The hard part is that revenue side. You know, one, we don't know who's going to be sick and two, they're changing how they're going to pay for those folks that do come in. So that's the one that's kind of just, uh, you know, I used to have a full head of hair until <laughs> this. Uh, it, it's just very difficult and, you know, it's, uh, it's a challenge to try to keep ahead of that curve and figure out, guess what's coming. As we wrap this up this morning, we spent a lot of time talking about financials and finance and the way hospitals work. But it's all about healthcare still, and you have quality people doing the healthcare job at Woodland Hospital. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, what our philosophy is, the patient comes first. We're going to do whatever it takes to take care of that patient. And there's been some cases where we've had some folks come in, and they said, well, their insurance won't authorize us to do this. I said, I don't care. Treat the patient. You know, that's what we have to do. That's what we're there for, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Take care of that patient first. We'll make the rest of it work somehow, but we're going to take care of the patient. John Alley, President, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. As always, thank you so much for your time this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, same to you. Thanks for having me in. You bet. Well done.